Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be comparing two different types of uh, handguard rails from Palmetto State Armory. Okay, so uh, these are 10-inch uh, Palmetto PX9s, basically 9mm ARs. Uh, so let's look at this rail over here first. And, and by the way, this does come in different length barrels, right, and also different calibers. Uh, so with this rail over here, You've got a five-slot rail in the uh, five-slot uh, Picatinny in the front, five-slot Picatinny in the back, and you've got like this little drop over here, which is ideal if you're going to take like a C-clamp, right? You know, when you look through the glass, right, your thumb sits a little lower, okay, when you look in the glass, okay? So this this drop aids the, uh, the C-clamp. I find that it works really good with that. Um, this one over here is a straight um, Picatinny rail across the top. Uh, but this, the, the, here's the thing, I would normally expect this to be heavier, but this in fact ends up being lighter. This is a lighter rail. Basically there's just more holes in the metal. It's more skeletonized. So this ends up being a lighter rail with, uh, with this one over here. Uh, basically there's like two levels, right? Top level and a bottom level on uh, across the top. Um, so, so this ends up being a heavier rail, and you can you can feel it when you hold the gun one-handed and shoot it the way that the government wants you to shoot it, one-handed like that, right? But it's a pistol, right? You gotta shoot it one-handed. That's how they, I'm sure that's how the government trains their agents to shoot their guns one-handed. Um, so when you're holding this one-handed compared to this one, okay, this gun is definitely lighter, right, in the front. So it, it's more. Uh, and I, I and I don't even know about the overall weight, um, but the um, it's 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 less front heavy. This gun tends to be more front heavy. Both 10 inch barrels. Um, the gun on this one, I've got the SB4 brace on here. This is a bigger brace, all right, so to try and counterbalance this a little bit better. And this this still ends up being a little bit more front heavy. Whereas with this one over here, you know, even though it has the the lighter brace in the back because it's a lighter rail the gun ends up being a lot lighter a lot easier to control one-handed and you could shoot this gun the way the government wants you to shoot it like that right that's how the government wants you to shoot the gun let's shoot the gun the way the government wants us to shoot it because like i said I, I know that's how they train all their agents to shoot the gun guns like this one-handed all right so Let's do a little shooting here. Turn it to the side. Let's do the side shoot. Upside down. There you go. Upside down. Upside down. There you go. How about lefty? Uh, out of ammo. Uh, that's the thing that sucks about these Palmetto PX9s. They do not have that last round bolt hole open. Now, I understand the reason why they do it. It makes the gun cheaper, makes the gun more reliable. But it's it, you know, now you, you get you know, basically until the gun goes click, you don't know that you're on your last round. So um that's the one drawback and the technique I have uh, developed for this because sometimes what you do, what I don't want to do with this gun, right? Let's say I'm shooting the gun, right? And I go click. I don't want to take the magazine out, put the next one in. Unless I look at the gun and make sure I don't have a jam, because with a, with a regular AR, right, when you're shooting that, right, you go, when your gun locks open, you turn it to the side, look at it, then you drop your mag, put the next one in. The technique I developed with the PX9s, right, is since they don't have the last round bolt hold open, okay, when, when the gun goes click, right, shoot the gun, click, okay, what I will do is I will open the gun, look at it, take the magazine out, put the next one in, safety on then I'll charge the handle so I charge the handle once to look at my chamber or look in, look inside the port to make sure I don't have a jam and then I'll, I'll, I'll after the magazine goes in I'll charge it again to put a, um, a round in the chamber um, because I have found that it, it even though it takes like an extra second to do that uh, on the off chance that you, you've got let's say a round that fails to eject or something um, you get a jam of some type because I use these ETS magazines. These PX9s are very hard on the magazines. I mean, this one is like a brand new magazine, 
And, you know, I've only had been using this for about a week and I can already see some of the scratch marks on the feed lips. So as these magazines get used up more and more, uh, you're going to get more and more occasional jams, especially on that last round. Okay, so on the last round, not a big deal, but if it, and what happens is it tends to nose up. So it'll, it'll, as the feed lips get worn out, it'll nose up, it'll go in, and it'll jam up your action. If you take a, if you pull out that magazine because you think the gun is empty and shove a good magazine in there now and cycle the, you know, pull the charging handle, now you're going to take a small jam and turn it into a big jam, okay? So that's why I've adopted the procedure, especially since I use ETS magazines because they're so cheap and I don't have to worry about losing these, okay? I've adopted the procedure that, okay, when the gun goes click, click, all right, what I'll do is, Open it up, look at it, put the safety on, magazine out, magazine in, run the charging handle, and then I'm ready to work, okay? Um, so I have found that, that that just works a lot better for me. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you're not a member of the channel, subscribe. Uh, hit that bell button so you get notification of new videos I put up.